Richard Sr. So you're obviously very familiar with the Brawl of the Wild. It's nothing new to you, but with you being here as long as you have, how much more does it mean to you to like really get a win uh, in this series this week? Uh, it's really important, especially since uh, Mike brought up yesterday that we haven't beat them in their gym since 2014, and that's before I was here, but it just kind of makes – uh, I think the girls were like, wow, we really, this is a great opportunity to go and get one. So for one, I want to get one in their gym. And then two, yeah, I want to get one, uh, get that second game at home too. So you've obviously played against them in, you know, your career at Montana. So uh, from what you're seeing from this team this year, doing what they're doing, what really sticks out to you from that bunch in Bozeman? Yeah, uh, Darian White is a really good point guard, gets to the basket well. Um, she's kind of their go-getter, gets the plays going. But we also have Sophia Styles, so I'm excited to see their matchup. Um, and then, yeah, they're really strong from the three-point line. So we just got to make sure we're guarding the arc, which we had uh, a game against Sac, who did kind of a similar thing. So we're kind of jumping straight into that uh, game type again. And then I think that our posts can be really strong in the posts against or against their posts. Um, so I'm really excited to see how their game goes as well. And then speaking of Darian, like you said, I mean, she's tough. But without speaking too much for Sophia, what's the key for her and the rest of you guys to really stopping Darian? Because really that whole offense runs through her. Right. Yeah, I think definitely limiting their transition uh, buckets and her speeding up the plays going down the floor. Um, Sophia does pretty well at picking people up, so maybe she can wear it down a little bit. I don't want to speak too much for what Sophia wants to do, but um, yeah, she can handle, I think she can handle her speed pretty well. And then just having our defensive of kind of packing the paint and making them kick out. So you touch on, obviously you've had some big moments, if I'm not mistaken, um, in some of these games. Can you touch on how just uh, kind of intense these games are and just what type of atmosphere it has brought in the past, obviously, without fans. I'll follow up um, on this question after about that. But just touch on the big moments and kind of like how intense these games are and how much they mean to you guys and your teams. Yeah, this game is always a big battle for us. Um, and our my one win against them at home was probably one of my better games in my career. Um, and just, I think... It's just key to be thinking of how can we be better and just play and play our style because I know that this game kind of does get a lot of hype around it. Um, but I think when we stick to our guns and what we're good at, that we'll uh, be able to handle it just fine. And it is a bummer not having fans because it's fun to play both in their gym when they're against you and then in our gym when they're for us. So we'll missing we'll be missing that for sure. Do you think you um, that that hurts more or helps more without the fans kind of, you know, around this game, crazy stuff can happen. Teams can kind of lose momentum, get a bunch of momentum from the fans, whether it results in turnovers, good or bad. Do you think you're able to kind of keep stay more balanced without the fans or would you kind of rather have them there? Or is it a just kind of give and take situation? Yeah, I think this game would probably be one out of all of our conference games. I'd want fans, whether it's against us or for us. I think it's really fun to play in a loud gym and, both of our teams usually have a pretty packed gym, especially for this game. And so, uh, but I mean, I think it also, like you said, kind of create a nice balance where it's going to really rely on the bench's energy and that'll just kind of be what we have to feed off of. Hi, Maddie. Uh, it's Bill. Uh, good afternoon. I, I just had a couple of questions. I noticed that Montana State is tied for the league lead uh, defensively. So obviously they're doing something right on that side of the ball. I, maybe you've seen a little film on them. What what are some challenges of uh, trying to, to to score a lot of points against the Bobcats? Um, trying to score against them. I haven't watched too much of their defensive clips yet, but um, I think kind of like what I was saying earlier, just doing what we do best. Uh, we have a really good inside out game. Um, I know our posts have been really strong, but we also have really good shooters that have the green light as well. Um, I think taking care of the ball, limiting turnovers, those sort of things will be huge for us as well. We in the media like to make a big deal out of uh, when you when you have to play on the road, hostile environment. But as a shooter, is, is there anything that that makes it, forces you to make adjustments in uh, in that Worthington arena? Just kind of curious because uh, the Lady Grizz really have kind of struggled the last three four years over there. Yeah. Um, yep. Shooting has always kind of been a struggle, but I think uh, we have such a new team of eight new girls, so I'm sure that they'll. They won't, they'll be fine. Um, they'll be able to shoot no problem. And I think just 
having us returners going with the mindset being like, this is our chance to go get our win there and uh, kind of recreate a new tradition because they have a little bit of momentum going in. So we want to change that up a little bit. What do you say to those eight new players then? I mean, you, <laughs> you want to make a big deal out of it, but you don't want them to get too nervous. Uh, what do you say to the, all those eight new, new players this year? Yeah, I think it's kind of a unique situation uh, having eight new people, um, but I think they're really excited. I mean, everyone's played in a rivalry game, so they know uh, what that kind of looks like. Um, and they know that they know the importance of it as well, that we've kind of been talking about it a little bit during practices and stuff. But I think they're just really excited to play together and go get when we've been playing pretty well and we have really good team camaraderie. And so um, I think they're just excited to go play the Cats. Thanks, Manny. Thanks, Maddie. Appreciate yep. the time. Good Thank luck you. on Thursday. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thanks, Maddie. Yeah. Who pulls yeah. up? Thanks. Hey, guys. The man himself. I, can you hear me? Okay. I know. Hi, Mike. I don't know why it's not working. Yeah, we can hear you great. Okay. Can you hear me, Coach? I can hear you. A little bit. I can't hear you guys very well, so if you guys – just so I don't – I'm not ignoring your question. I'll try to speak slowly so that it reverberates. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, yeah. <laughs> Probably been up too late. I haven't slept as much. Can't hear anything. Oh, man, I feel that. That was me last week. I guess I'll uh, lead things off again. Um, Jack asked Maddie about this, so I'll ask you. I mean, with the Brawl of the Wild, it's the fans, it's the atmosphere. There's so many elements that go into it beyond the court. So not having that, both in Missoula and Bozeman, how much does that either help or hurt you guys during this series? Well, I, I, there's no question we'll miss it. I mean, you're talking about two programs, two schools that have the best fan bases in the big sky. And... You know, I'm sure both sides uh, tell recruits how important and valued women's basketball is here in Missoula. And, you know, we're, we've been number one attendance for years. They've been number two. Um, so you got two great fan bases. So, yeah, it, it, it'll be different, no question. But I will say that everyone will be watching. Everyone will be following. And even though our fans haven't been able to come to games, um, we hear from them after every game, win or lose. And I'm sure they're doing the same thing over there. So uh, it's it's unfortunate that we can't be there, but I know they're still there uh, when watching and following. And then talking about the Bobcats, when you look at their offense, you can't overlook Darian White, who really has most of the offense running through her. Uh, how do you stop someone so dynamic like that? <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you find out, let us know. Uh, uh, She's a special player. Um, and then not only is it her, but she obviously runs the show for them, gets them going. Uh, very dangerous in transition, very dangerous attacking the basket. And you can talk about how you want to slow her down, but no one seems to do it yet. Um, and then Tori's a very experienced shooter, uh, one of the best three-point shooters in our league. You know, she would have started on any team last year probably uh, instead, she's, you know, the sixth man of the year or uh, recognized for that honor. Um, but also they have a lot of talented young players, too. And we knew they had a talented group coming in. Uh, they, now they're getting better and better. I feel like that last week was their best weekend. I feel like they're playing their best basketball right now. Um, when you have talent and you get experience with it, that's, you know, um, a dangerous combination for an opponent. And they're playing very well right now. And, so, and, and during White, it starts with her – you know, on the offense and defensive end. I mean, we have Sophia Styles, and we love Sophia. She's our leader in that same position, and we would – we're so glad that she's with us, and that's going to be a fun matchup. Uh, both of them can impact the game on offense and defense. So that will be a fun matchup for sure. You guys haven't won in Bozeman, and I think it's about six or seven years now since 2014. So – what would it mean for this program to finally go back to Brick Breeden and get that big dub? Well, I told our players yesterday in practice, I just said, you know, just so you guys know, 
you know, we, we are part of uh, arguably one of the most historic women's basketball programs in the area, and not just the area, but around uh, what Coach Selvig did. Um, the fact that we haven't won in Bozeman since 2014, um, you know, I told them all to ask where were they were in their life when they were in 2014. And, you know, I think half our team was, might be still taking naps in school. That's how you know, it's been. So uh, there's definitely, a, it's been a while. And the only way to end that streak is if you play in Bozeman and we could do that Thursday. So I like, guess a very, very tough team. Do you feel you've uh, been able to control the tempo of games more uh, without fans? Kind of maybe not have to take a timeout um, to communicate something to a player, maybe just literally yell it to them. Um, do you, how do you feel about that? Do you think that'll help maybe in an away rivalry game? Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like um, obviously we prefer to have fans. I feel like you can communicate. Yeah, you probably can get more in an empty gym. Um, but we still miss the fans because we miss that momentum that they bring. You know, even playing over there, uh, they always have a great crowd and it's a great atmosphere. And, um, you know, both places have a special fan base. Uh, we definitely love to have them. But, uh, you know, it, it was like now, it's just a lot like practice, really. You know, it's, um, you know, we practice in our arena and we got all the corporate sponsorships all up over there. And it just, it's just kind of like that. Obviously, um, a tough uh, shooting performance from deep against Sack in the second game, I believe, one for 17. Do you obviously you can't just be like, hey, guys, you know, work on making more shots. I'm sure they drop all the time in practice. How do you just preach to your team to, to find the, the soft spots of the defense and eventually those shots will fall? Well, you know, going into this year, I shared with some of you, guys, uh, you know, that was a big hole for us. You know, we lost 85% of our three-point scoring last year. It either graduated or, or left the program. So that was a huge hole for us. And we worked on that all. That was emphasis from last spring. And I think there's just been, of our 11 games, there's been two games we've struggled. So we've actually had better numbers, but that was one of those days. And that happens. And, you know, we still got to give our kids confidence. We still got to instill that in them. Um, but at the same time, you know, our defense has to come through and our defense came through for us. You know, we lost the lead in the fourth quarter, uh, didn't panic. Girls made great plays down the stretch. And with everything with uh, scoring, you know, you always want to establish inside first. And that's what our main goal is always to establish the paint, uh, whether it's through post game, through penetration, through cutters, uh, that's our offensive rebounds. That's where we want to establish first. So uh, it's definitely the focus, and we uh, told our kids to shoot with confidence, and and uh, now we have to go on the road to do it. Mike, it, it looks like uh, Montana State's playing some pretty good defense right now, at least in league play. They're right up there with Idaho State. What do you see as some challenges to, to crack into that defense? They're very good defensively, Bill. They are uh, one of the best teams on defense. They're very active. Um, they love to uh, – you know, really jump in the passing lanes as far as on good on ball pressure. They really bait you well. They're just very active and 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 just pesky, and they do a good job. You know, and, and it's not just Darian who, you know, I think her and Sophie are one of the lead leaders in steals, but they're just active defensively and do a good job of how they guard on ball screens. Um, they change things up a little bit. Um, we expect them to have a plan to uh, defend the post game that we have and. And, uh, you know, there's a very good defensive team. They always have been, really. I think that's been an underrated part of <clears throat> Trisha's teams is how good they are on defense. Uh, she does a really good job with that. And now that she has these new players getting better and better every game, so they are a very good defensive team, no question. Well, they, they played great against NAU. They, they didn't just beat NAU. They dominated in both games. I mean, those were two impressive wins. Um, and you can tell they're putting a lot of confidence right now. You've You've been to these games as an assistant coach, but this is your first one as a head coach. And uh, it means so much to former players and, and uh, just people around the state. What's it like for you this week? Uh, um, how nerve wracking is it? How exciting is it? Well, it's always about the players first. So, um, you know, we're doing it, it inspires. We have a great fan base. We also have a great alumni base. 
and a very proud alumni. And their support throughout this entire, since last spring has been amazing. And our players got to know of some of our alumni, um, but it's always about them first, the players. And, you know, I, I'm fortunate that we, I get to work with three great coaches in Jordan Sullivan, Nate Colville and Jace Henderson, all of which played in this game. And so there, there's no short, uh, shortness of passion or emotional investment in this week, but there's also no shortness of, of emotional investment in this job for them. So they bring it every day. And that's special to have, to get to work with three coaches that, that are, are so emotionally invested in this game. And, um, you know, that they're, it, it shows, it shows in their approach, it shows in their work ethic and uh, it carries down to our players. So, you know, you gotta be careful not to make it bigger than it is. You got control, you control. Um, and we have a, you know, a new team, a, a team that's really inexperienced, both teams, both teams only have one senior. So both teams are going into it. If there's, if there's a positive and, and Lord knows this in this times, we've got to find the positive. Um, there's a positive not having fans is the fact that eight of our kids are new and they don't know any different. So we just got to ride that. Did everybody healthy then going into the game? At least that was healthy this weekend? Yeah. Yep. We have our uh, regular 14 players that will be available and and uh, ready to go here as we go into practice. Just kind of touching on that. I know Abby Anderson's kind of had some ankle issues here and there. How has she been doing so far with that? Yeah, everybody's good to go. Um, you know, we're all, I think everybody's in that grind of the season where it's, you know, you're, you're playing through a lot of stuff and, uh, but we're good to go and ready, you know, and, and another unique factor is just to hold back playing t the same team twice and then rallying. Usually this is, usually you play one game this week. And so it's the new experience for everybody to have to play and then turn around and play again the same team. That's a lot of uh, uh, emotion in one week that uh, we'll be interested to see how both teams handle. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate Thanks, Mike. And nice, nice off. Oh, thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Oh, thank you guys for everything, man. Appreciate it. Got you. Got you. And, and go. I think I heard, did I hear Joel over say? Joel, Joel, oh, yeah, Joel said Joel he, say he'll, send guys, it. he'll send you this. He recorded, but he said he'll send it to you if you guys just reach out to him. Cool. I'll Thanks, Mike. Coach. Thanks, Coach. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate sure. you. Look. Bye.